So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to find items that you'd want to give in Archives and Nethys and different sections in Archives and Nethys that can be helpful for finding items, and then go over how you would find these items in Foundry and then actually give them to characters so that you can even use just the inbuilt Foundry search tools if you just need to find something like 30 minutes before a session starts. So with that, let's get right into it. So let's start with sorting by the fundamental runes, which are the runes that just about every character will want to get eventually. The casters might not need the weapon runes and might skip on those, but they will still want the armor runes. So it's always a good idea to just drop some fundamental runes if you haven't been doing that for a while. And to do that, you can click on runes, and then back at the top, you can then see a bunch of different categories there. Moving face cam again. You can see a bunch of different categories there of accessory, armor, property, fundamental armor, fundamental weapon, weapon property. The accessory and property runes are like minor special abilities well accessories minor special abilities where property runes are major special abilities so in the property runes that's where you get stuff like flaming where they do an extra d6 fire damage and accessory runes give you stuff like you can have an item come into your hand easier or other various interesting things but we're going to be talking about fundamental runes first because with the fundamental runes they are pretty limited in number. Like you can see here, I'm going to move my webcam back up top right. Whee! And you can go ahead and see how it's just six runes for the armor. And these are things that pretty much every character will want because what character will turn down a plus one to AC? What character is going to turn down a plus one to all saves? And then those as they level up. So if you're a new GM, you should just like follow the level numbers here. Maybe you might level early. Or like a level late but you should probably try to stick around giving your parties that they have each character having their own set of these things upon those levels ending roughly is what i like and i personally prefer to give my players a little bit too much loot than a little bit too less because i find it more fun to have more hero fantasy that way but if you want to play a more gritty grounded game starving your players of their loot for just a little bit longer can really have that feeling come into play and now let's talk about the fundamental weapon runes. So that's where you get your weapon potency, which are bonuses to accuracy, and your striking runes, which are bonuses to your strike damage. Strikings give you extra dice of damage, so this makes it so that a great sword will never fall off in damage compared to a dagger, even though a lot of flat bonuses are getting on, added on like the flame runes, like weapon specialization, and a lot of buffs will be flat numbers. And striking makes sure that the weapon's base damage die never stops mattering entirely. So, all these things here are great gifts for a martial character. Giving striking early to a martial makes that character feel like a god for a level. So, I would highly recommend doing so, just because that experience is very fun if it, it happens for like a short period of time where they can be a little bit above curve. And I think that those moments are to be savored. So, I like to give my players those types of moments. And that will come up a lot with how I'm describing what items I choose to give my players. But giving things that are too high in the fundamental can fundamentally change the math of how combat works. So I'd not recommend going too high level on these. However, there are some items that I think are fine to give at high level, but I'll get to those eventually. Next, we're going to go on to the things for casters. And what better place to start than wands? Because when people think of casters, they normally think of like the wands and the staves. I'm starting wands because they're less complicated and I'm going to put off doing the hard thing as long as I can. So, with wands, you have items that can repeatedly cast a spell once per day. You can just cast a spell and then the next day you can repeat and do it again. There is the mechanic of overcharging that has a chance of permanently breaking your wand, so it's usually never correct to go for. And I say usually because... Somebody in the comments can come up with a, like, really niche scenario where they needed to in order to win a combat. And I want to hear that story if you have it. Go put it down below because I love reading those. Um, you have wands of spells, and these wands come online at two levels behind when you'd get access to the spell. So in order to get a first level spell in a wand, that's a level three item. For a level two spell, you get that character level three, so you need to wait till level five. And this is a repeated theme with balancing of items is that if you get a once per day cast of a spell, it should be at least two levels behind when a caster would actually get it so that the caster can get it first and feel special for that level. So that is just a thing to ensure that casters are never useless and they cannot be out utility by a marshal with a magic item. 
because that is an important thing that they keep in track. And the marshals get the striking runes to make sure that Fireball does not output more single target damage than the marshal could do, like um, some other game systems that I might be thinking of right now. So, you may also notice that there's a lot of specific ones. And these are ones that talk about either one specific spell or type of spell that then have some modification to these. And out of these, I personally like the Wand of Manifold Missiles, which basically what it does is it casts Magic Missile from it, and then at the start of their turn, it casts another Repeat Missile. So these are like modifications to low-level spells that then make them far more interesting. Wand of Smoldering Fireballs is another very interesting one. <clears throat> Smoldering... Because this then has the Fireball do some persistent fire damage, so if you have creatures that are weak to fire like trolls in a group, this can then apply persistent fire to all of them and you're having a great time. So, Wands, great gift for a caster, and because they're only once per day, and they use the caster spell DC, you can actually give out a higher level wand early, and not break the math of the game except for maybe like one encounter per day where they get to have a super move and feel extra awesome. So I like giving out high level wands early on, because I think they feel cooler than they break the game balance. And that's kind of what I'm looking for with the magic items that I give for my style of GMing. But for a GM that wants to be a little bit tighter with the magic items, you can then start giving them these like low level, first level wand utility spells and then challenge your players to make full use of them as best they can. So you might give them a wand of something like Featherfall that is a reaction for when they're falling to make them constantly want to be holding this wand and then having them go, okay, so because we're going into this cavernous area where there's pits, I might want to have my wand of feather fall out, and you can then create a bunch of issues with what am I actually holding my hands by giving them a bunch of low-level items that are nichely useful instead, which thus has your players have to be more scrappy, more tactical in what they're doing, if you don't want to have that more heroic style of game. Now, staves. Staves are more core to, like, your caster's identity. Staves are really expand like your amount of prepared spells effectively they do this in different ways and i'd recommend just reading how stats work for either prepared or spontaneous casters depending on what type of caster your character is so that way you as the gm will roughly know what you're giving them but even if you give a high level staff early they're still limited by what they can cast from it by their character level by what slots they're burning into order to get there so it's still fine to give a higher level staff early they can't really cast any of the above level spells anyway, so you'll be doing fine. And I'll need to double check the rules on this, but I think that prepared casters might be able to cast like 5th level spells from stabs if they do the sacrificing slots thing, but spontaneous casters definitely can't. And I know that any caster can cast a high level wand for just fine, so wands are a good way to just like have explosive power be put into the party in a very controlled manner. But those are not my favorite types of items to give out, and I'll go over that in just a moment. Because my favorite button is actually this All Item Bonuses button. This is the category that shows you all the items that give a bonus to some type of skill. And so you can see the skill in this left column over here. And so what I do is I control F for the skill that my character uses. So if I type in Athletics, it then highlights all the things that give a plus one bonus to Athletics. And then you can give these as your adventuring gear, so that way I can go, hmm, well, if I give them a levered crowbar, they can force open better. Do I want to do that for them? Well, if I give them a diving suit, they can swim better. If I give them portable ram, they can force open gates and other similar things. Okay. Lifting belt. Oh, no requirement. So it's just all athletics check to get this plus one. And it will tell you if it's consumable in this column, so you can know what you're giving your players. And they always come with like some little other funny effect. And I really like giving these out, because the plus one to a skill won't break the game in any significant way. It's a plus one to a skill, and that won't do direct damage in the same way a strike would. So like if you give a striking run early, that can really shift the combat balance of the game, where this will leave your combats mostly intact, and leave a player feeling really cool that they now have this extra bonus that then makes them feel like they're cheating the game system by having this bonus that feels really high. But in reality, out of combat, you're rolling much fewer skill checks than you would be strikes, and there's no way to double dip in value of skill checks in the same way you could double dip in strikes by having more accuracy and more damage from striking and potency. So it really is a more controlled way to give power. And there are some of these items that do have very potent passives. For 
if given out too early. For example, the Demon Mask can, as a level 10 item, cast a third level fear with DC 29. So if you give a very high level Demon Mask to a party early on, you're going to need to contend with this large fear spell that has a set DC. So you should be careful giving things out with set DCs too early on, because that can start to really shift the comp balance of the game. But because this is a once per day effect, it really won't be that bad, as long as you have several encounters per day. And then it'll be a thing of when does the party want to burn their super move. Which can also be an interesting style of game, but that's not really what PF2 is built for. Because PF2 is built for every combat should be as intense as possible. And that's where a lot of its balance is. But if you go and give them these high level items, you can then put more of that super heroic fantasy in into the lower levels of play. And that is something I personally enjoy in my games. It's not to everybody's taste though, but it is something you can do. You don't need to feel restricted by item levels. They're more of a guideline than anything else. And usually in these skill items, they won't cause you balance problems for giving them too early, in the same way a striking or a potency rune would. So, that is my favorite type of item to give out. There are a bunch of other items in here that you could search by. And then, there's also the actual way you could search in the all equipment section by filtering out by numbers, which can do things like level, price, range, whatever. You can look for traits, like if you wanted to look for a very specific type of item, you can look for it by trait. And you can look for it by all these different types of filters that will then sort for what you need. So like, for example, if I wanted to see items that have the cold trait, then I can see that it's like, okay, so it's stuff like Frostfowl, the Gelid Shard, and I can try and find something for an ice themed game of the right level this way. And now I'm going to hop open into Foundry and talk a little bit about items there. So anyway, now we're in a zoomed in version of my Foundry. So if we open up the Compendium browser, you can then gain access to a lot of different things. One of which is actually in the equipment section. And this will have all the items, including ones from Venture Paths that aren't on Archives of Nethys. So you can then do the same thing of searching by traits, search rarities, and a bunch of different things, and also levels. But it won't have you get those sorted lists for things like exactly the things that have the item bonus. So I like going on Archives of Nethys if I want to like look for everything with an athletics bonus. Because I just like the templating there more. But again personal preference thing, and I'm going to keep on pushing my agenda as forward as I can. So, now let's say I want to give an athletic time to one of my characters. I found an Arcus Nethys, I want to give them a lifting belt. Putting it on screen now, but instead of putting it on screen, I'll just search text, lifting belt. And now it is in Foundry. If I want to come from my character's gold, I can click on their token on the board, and then I can click this little gold icon, which is right here where my mouse is, that little icon there, that means that they will buy the item using their gold pieces, where this lets them take the item, or you can simply drag and drop it onto them to have it go into their inventory in the proper section. Drag into the board places that a map tile, and you can go into tile controls, click and delete if you want to get rid of it there. So with that, you can actually put items on characters. There are some modules I have not messed around with, that allow players to drag and drop items from each other easier. Uh, I do not know the name of that one off the top of my head. If you do, put in the comments below. I don't personally use it because my players, quite frankly, don't swap items around that much, so I haven't felt the need to do it. And in this game in particular, these are all people I trust a lot. So I just gave them ownership of each other's sheets, and they just don't mess around with them much because they don't mess around with their own sheets that much. So they're not going to be looking at each other's sheets. So I'm usually the one that's to bring up, hey, you know, that guy had a striking pick earlier, and this one doesn't have the striking rune yet, so... And I just mentioned that between sessions and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, I just go into Compendium Browser down there, searching all the things. So if I wanted to, in Foundry, if I had a session like 15 minutes, I wanted to find an item quickly. I'd then go into Levels, I'd sort by, uh, well, my party's around level 4 now, so I'll look for items level 3 to 7. Find something I think is interesting. Uh, maybe I'd go into traits, and I would go and find consumables, because let's say I want to give them consumable. <clears throat> now what I want to give them? And I can kind of flip through until I find some that speaks to me. So like, in this case, I'm going to say that this frost file, this bomb speaks to me. So then I can give them an ice damage bomb. And booyah, I have found an item of the proper level of generally theme that I want. And again, that would show up by sword by ice, or cold is the trait name. 
and then it shows me all the consumable cold things in that level range, and that's pretty easy. But I feel like this search tool is not as powerful as one Archives and Ethos, because Archives and Ethos gives you so many more options to click in through. So I tend to do my search in Archives and Ethos, so I want to find something pretty specific. But if I don't really mind, I can do exactly in Foundry search tool and find pretty much what I'm looking for as well. And that is my broad idea of how I get items for my characters. And <clears throat> if I want them to find this in dungeon, I'd place it in a dungeon, maybe have a creature use it on them. So that way they then go, okay, that was kind of cool. And then start using it themselves. So yeah, that's the end of this video. If you want to see more things like this, like and subscribe. I haven't said that in my past two videos, but that's why most of my watch time comes from people that aren't subscribed. It's like 80%. It's crazy. I don't have the graph because uh, I don't feel like showing it. You can also click the videos that are on screen now. That's another option. Or not. Okay, video's ending. Bye.